Hello and welcome to the April edition of My Cyber Why. Today we're here with Nicola Whiting, who is the Chief Strategy Officer for Titania. And we're going to be addressing her cyber why, who she is, why she does it. So thank you very much for being here, Nicola. My absolute pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Nicola, who are you? So um, I am the Chief Strategy Officer of Titania. Um, I don't know whether you're old enough to remember Victor Kayan, the, the guy that loved his razor so much he bought the company. I kind of loved yeah. the company so much I married the owner, or he loved me enough that he didn't want me to leave. I don't know, one of those two things. But I, I fell into Titania in the early years as the third person, and I'm still here, and we're in the kind of 53rd person. Um, so I've overseen a lot of its its growth. So Ian, our CEO, was a pen tester, Czech team leader. He found uh, a need in the industry to be able to audit devices at scale and quickly and find vulnerabilities before attackers could. And that problem still in our industry, that whole problem of how to do cyber hygiene well and at scale. So that's what we help our clients do. Um, but like many technical people, he wasn't really somebody that had a voice that everybody in the boardroom could understand. So mm -hmm. I became the company Babelfish. And I think that's where a lot of um, people in cyber that maybe haven't come from a cyber background or traditional technical background really help bridge the gap. Um, so a bridge is something that takes you from one point to another point for mutual benefit. And I think that's where my place in Titania has been. It's been in building the teams in building the people um, and helping the company and the people in the company find their voice. So it, it seems like you're very colorful in <laughs> in, in in your in how you speak and and how, and how you how you are. Your hair is beautiful. Uh, so part of the who who are you? Who, who did you bring in with that diversity? Who were you before you were at Titania, and how does that help bridge that gap? Um, so I I have a background before in um, databasing, in remote control software. And I, I did that for a number of years. And then like, like many people in the industry, I was kind of like, oh, I'm tired. This was the early days of the industry. I mean, we, we talk about women in cyber now. I mean, the earlier days of the industry, you know, 80s, 90s, it was like manland. And so I was like, okay, I'm tired, tired. So I went and became a jewelry designer and became like top of my field there and the chairman of a guild and had multiple jewelry stores and and then kind of went, okay, where do I go from here? And was moving and, and fell into Titania. And then, so for the past eight years, that's what, what I've done. But I've brought all that past experience of building a businesses yeah. and languaging into cyber because we kind of have a problem with our dictionary. Mm. We have a problem with engagement because we don't talk in the language that the people that we want to engage with understand. Yeah. And um, without being crass, sometimes we technically kind of pee on a wall and see who can be the most technical. Um, and that doesn't really help um, our people solve the problems they want to solve. Um, or we use that sort of shiny disco ball language and, and oh look over here, this is this is artificial intelligence. So when it's it's really maybe not. <laughs> Um, you know, the, the whole vendor, vendor scene where I think a lot of people that are really experienced experts in our industry get tired of that. They just want some honesty. Um, and that's kind of really where um, we've excelled. So we, we really pride ourselves on our clarity and our honesty um, and our forthrightness on what we can do and what we can't do. Um, so when we can't do it, we build a partnership, find somebody that can and do a best of um, breed solution. That kind of thing is 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 why we've kept our clients for so long. And, and they're pretty cool clients. You know, we work with people like the Department of Defense and the FBI and really underpin some of the most um, security conscious organizations in the world. And, and, and part of that is being open and honest. 
I totally agree. I mean, if, you're, if you can't be honest, you can't just say, as soon as you ask vendors, how does your AI work? And they're like, well, it's it, it basically, it's magic. It, it, yeah. it creates itself. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, and I suppose that's where I've contributed quite a lot in the industry in terms of when I've been taking on this expertise, um, looking at the pathways of that and going, well, if we're going to really look, look at what's happening with AI. I mean, Microsoft, as yourselves, you've, you've had those learning experience. I remember Tay, <laughs> the, the AI in, in social media, you know, became a kind of a neo-Nazi in 16 hours because you trust the good people of the internet to train her. And unfortunately, the good people of the internet turned out to be a-holes. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and this, you know, it happened with Am Amazon and they had some learning experiences around um, their recruitment AI that they were trying to do because it turned out that most of their past hires were guys. So it was discriminating against girls because it looked at the past data and learnt the preference right. was for guys. And and so when people put things behind a magic curtain, it really makes it hard for people to move forward. Um, when we reached for the moon, yeah. <laughs> people had to be really honest on what didn't work because people could die. Yeah. And I don't think in some ways that this is any less serious because we're talking about critical national infrastructure that hospitals depend on. Yeah. You know, there are things where attacks like WannaCry have made that kind of impact that people could die. You know, if if the ele electricity or water supply went out, there's actually some serious consequences. So, you know, we we have we we have that honesty and I think more people in the industry need that kind of honesty and we need to stop acting like the Wizard of Oz and saying it's magic because, yeah. and I think that's that's where I I spend a lot of my time in terms of going, look, yeah, it's great. Yeah, it can do fantastic things, but we also need to be realistic. And then, and when you look at some of the, the recent EU directives, say on AI, yeah. where there were like loads and loads of experts in our industry saying, we, absolutely categorically are saying that we will never make autonomous weapon systems well it's the same kind of thought process that then makes a decision on whether your network's open or not mm. <laughs> so if it if we're not ready there how come you're saying in the shop floor in rsa or infosec that we suddenly magically are ready over here um, the two have a disconnect and yes. yeah. it's solvable but i think we need to talk a little bit more openly. Yeah, I, I totally agree. A, a security company uh, that has mobile device protections recommending that their employees don't take their mobile devices to Black Hat because they might get hacked. It's like, yeah. which, you know, <laughs> okay, company, you know, like if, if a yeah. company does that, you kind of ask it, if, if it can't protect people against Black Hat, why are we selling this as a, why would, would as an industry, why would that be sold as this? Because Black Hat is not, it, it, you're not, you know, a nation state terrorist necessarily. So you've got, it's, it's a great point that, you know, if we, we've got to have the build these protections that are scalable in, in multiple different circumstances, not just secure when nobody's trying to attack it. Yes. Absolutely. It's, it's so what, that ability to validate. Yes. Yeah. So what, what motivates you when you get up in the morning when you decided to switch away from the guild and, and join it? What, what's your why? What's that real passion? And I've, I've heard a lot of creativity discussion about, you know, obviously concern for loss of life and the betterment of society through cyber. And, yeah. you know, what else is it that as you wake up in the morning that really fires you? <laughs> So actually, um, if I was being really completely truthful and honest, um, the, the why of security in terms of stuff to get secure doesn't motivate me as much as when I think of the people it's securing. So um, again, as, as I spoke earlier, we, we, Titania came from Titan. We're space, a lot of us are space nuts. Um, and I remember the story of the janitor in NASA. And somebody said, what are you doing? He was mopping a floor. He said, I'm helping a guy get into space. 
And when when we talk with our people in our on our meetings, when we hire somebody new, our our vision and our values are tied in with that. We're we're not just helping people secure their networks. We're not just helping them find some, their vulnerabilities quicker and and run the script faster and save man hours. Yeah, we're doing all that stuff. But what we're really helping is protect the IP of the cancer researchers. Mm-hmm. We're yeah. really helping the people in the space agency protect their systems against people getting into them when they're protecting astronauts. You know, um, we're helping people who are responsible for the electricity flowing make sure that it's a little bit less likely that somebody can get in through a badly configuration firewall. You know, that kind of thing. So that's really the motivating thing. It's the people that we empower and that we protect that actually makes us get out of bed. The technical stuff is just the cool stuff that delivers that. Right. It's just it's how we do it. But it's that people can go about and and succeed in their lives and and safely as as safely as possible. For every man hour we save in cyber hygiene, which let's face it, is boring. Um, we empower those people to be creating new ways of building the business. And, you know, most technical guys would much rather be playing with the new stuff that's going to make them look good and do all the bells and whistles than mm-hmm. have we, you know, done the configurations this month, which is essential. You, you know, you don't leave your door open, you don't leave your windows open, you, you've got to do this stuff. And it, let's face it, it's where most of the breaches happen. It's boring hygiene stuff that because of business pressures gets left behind. So if we can automate that, that frees people up to do the more useful, productive things that they can get on with when they've taken care of their housekeeping. So that that's it. So, you know, it's interesting that the last question is, 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 is how, which is sort of, you know, how do you want the community to engage? And, and it feels like maybe a good how for you is, is how could we get people to, to get excited about cyber hygiene? Because you're right, it's not sexy. I was just having this, this conversation with a, a colleague earlier about a blog that we're putting together. And it's, it's a little frustrating. I, years ago, I used the analogy of flossing your teeth. Because it's not it's not very exciting. People don't want to do it. But once you realize what it does for your dental health, it's like, ooh, I do want to do that. Yeah. So how how do I mean how how do you think we could get people to understand why it's so important? Or is the answer just we just need to automate it because they'll never? Get it. Uh, I, I think <laughs> the answer is to make it easier, and the answer is to make it so that it's not a never-ending story. Um, it's you know that 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 uh, the. Oh, Marie, uh, the, 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 the magic of tidying up. Oh, yeah, Marie Kondo. Marie Kondo. So yeah. I want cyber hygiene to be like that. I want it's people to joy. want to go into their drawers. I want people to feel excited about, do you know what? I've nailed my configurations. I know certainly that they are hardened. Yeah. I know that if somebody gets in, they can't escalate those privileges. I know with some level that if somebody opens that drawer, my pants aren't gonna be everywhere. You know, I want that magic of tidying up feeling. And I think the language that we use in our industry about cyber hygiene doesn't help that. You know, when you watch Mary Fonda on her program, she's like, look at this, isn't it fantastic? I want those cyber guys to feel like that about their networks as opposed to how am I going to do this and the pressure of not doing it and the feeling that it's lurking there ready to trip them up and get them fired which is probably how many people feel you know I, I remember one of our clients in the military saying I can remember when going to a site meant two months of work and now it's two weeks Mm-hmm. You know, right. That's how I want people to to feel. I, I want people to feel like, you know what, I'm going to get this job done and then I can move on and I'm going to feel empowered and that I'm going to feel that that's been taken care of. And as we automate more and more of that, yeah. that two weeks becomes two days, becomes two hours, becomes I'm not spending any time on it at all. Right. 
And, and that's the kind of envisioned future. It's the autonomous defence, the self-healing networks. But as an industry, we are way <laughs> further away from that than we um, would sometimes believe if we listen to some of the vendors on the shop floor. <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, the, the magical wave the wand, everything's perfect. But I, I love where you're going with the spark joy. That's in, that's inspiring me. If we can get, because you're you're, it's just it's so right. If we can get people excited about how they fold their shirts because they're going to be more, you know, when they open the yeah. door, we can get people excited about you know protecting their configuration files and yeah. and doing the backups. So yeah, I, absolutely. I think that's a great way to look at it. Well, thank you so much for for sharing who you are and your cyber why with everybody and thanks everybody who's tuned in we'll see you again next month thank, thank you. you thank you very much